I am talking in a British accent today because I have the great honor and privilege of talking to an acclaimed British artist, one of the most prolific of his generation. You have undoubtedly seen his artwork in comics like uh, the Sandman comics, Arkham Asylum, uh, Violent Cases uh, and Cages, as well as books like How I Swapped My Dad for Two Goldfish, uh, The Wolves in the Walls and Black Dog. He makes art, short films, theater, writes, plays music, just an all-round artist, always uh, on the front lines of new uh, technology and new ground. Here to talk to me about his latest book on the threat or promise of AI. Without further ado, Mr. Dave McKean. I feel uh, I feel it's somehow uh, insufficient to, to introduce you as Mr. Dave McKean. It should be Sir <laughs> Dave McKean, if you ask me. But thank you for joining me. Um, it's an honor to speak to you. And obviously, you've had such a long uh, and wide-ranging career that there are a million things that we could be talking about. But uh, this discussion of, of AI created art is is all over my uh, Facebook feed these days. And, and you just published a book about it. So I thought it was highly relevant uh, to talk to you. The book is called uh, Prompt, which are the words you put into this AI thingy to get it to create this artwork. What prompted you, uh, pun intended, to write this book? Um, well, I think, uh, like all of us, we've started to see uh, these um, AI images popping up on Facebook feeds and news feeds. I was curious as to where they, what they were, where they'd come from. I did uh, about an hour's research <laughs> and um, then fell on the floor in a sort of blind panic and uh, thought, that's it, really? That's it. I, must, I mean, they're just, just doing my job. I, I'm re now redundant. There's no, absolutely no reason why any art director or company would bother to uh, ask a, an illustrator to make an image when they can just type a few words into AI and come up with perfectly reasonable, actually very sophisticated solutions to that to that problem and an infinite amount of them. And they don't know what they want. They just want to see something and then they'll respond to it. So they're always now asking for 20, 30, 40 options. Well, now they can have an infinite amount of completely finished options. This is this is a marketing department's wet dream of a technology. <laughs> All new technology offers extraordinary uh, possibilities, as well as down the road, uh, the collateral damage of the downside. Um, so I was curious as to what those advantages would be. So I, I was either going to retire or respond. So I spent um, what ended up being 12 days solid uh, just making um, mid-journey images uh, or AI images and I, it, on the first day I decided it was going to be a book that was so that was me getting used to using it to see how, what what its strengths were and where its weaknesses were and and for the book to show my readers the power of it and what what it could do and then taking all my lessons and thoughts and experiences from doing that into the third part which was a conversation with their AI out on one of my walks in the morning, asking it questions and seeing how it would respond and mulling over the ethical questions that I thought it had kicked up and where I am in all of this, how, how do I fit in? And then how do we all fit in? How does this affect society? How does this affect our mental health? How does this affect our definitions of creativity and art? I understand everything changes, everything moves on. Okay, if that's the world we're moving into, okay but i just i don't see anybody really asking those questions why we're doing this is this the, is this the world we want to move into what is the collateral damage going to be so i wanted right. the book just to ask those questions really the tech evangelists release these uh, viruses on us with no forethought and we are distracted by the lovely bauble of it and all these new things <laughs> sure and, yeah. and, and, the, and the downsides don't start to appear for a decade down the road, and by then it's too late. You know, it's it's embedded in our society, and uh, you can't uninvent these things. I mean, I have a basic problem with the idea of AI art. Art for me has a very particular definition. It's it's a human activity. I've had arguments with people about you know a beautiful sunset that they've said, look at that extraordinary sunset. Now to me that's art. Mm. That's the other person talking. For me, it's not art. It's nature. If you make a painting of that, if you interpret that through the human imagination, 
then it can become art if it's good. Everything around you is not art. It's not art until it's gone through the, the process of being interpreted and understood and redefined uh, as, a, as part of the creative process of being human. Now, whether we fold AI into that is part of the decision. Do we decide that art is a human activity or are we going to include AI in on that or is it going to be a separate category? I don't know. I, 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 I'm only asking questions here. Uh, some people are arguing that uh, AI, like Midjourney, is a tool, much like Photoshop, and therefore we shouldn't worry so much about the robots coming to take our jobs. But what, what's your take on that? In one sense, of course, it is an extremely powerful tool. And I've used it for work, and I've used it to generate material and incorporate it into my working method. At, and that's absolutely fine. I feel vaguely sick while I'm doing it because um, it still feels like a fraud. It still seems, seems right. fraud. I think my, my sick feeling comes from, this is very hard to put really, but it, it was something to do with having put the time and hours in to learn how to play the piano. I play piano and I've spent obviously years of my life now uh, learning the intricacies of playing the piano. To arrive now at a point where I can just think of a piano tune and it arrives, it just is played. That's the equivalent for me of this. The amount of effort going in, typing a word, just not even a few words, <laughs> one word into an AI device and getting a, a hugely sophisticated end result, image end result, which is ripping the DNA from other artists' work online or imagery online. I've never seen the gap between the complete lack of effort of any any kind going in and the huge sophistication of the end result coming out. This is not the same as any other technological tool I can think of. And many have been suggested. I've seen conversations go by, people saying, oh, this is just like Photoshop. It really is not like Photoshop. You have to do some work in Photoshop to get anything out of it. It's not like auto-tune. You have to be able to, I've used auto-tune, you have to be able to sing reasonably to get anything coming out the other end that feels like a human performance. All of these technological tools are great at enhancing your the abilities that you bring to it and allowing you to do certain things. But this is, this is, a, this is a quantum, this is a different category, I think, of tool, if you want to, I mean, it is, it is a tool, and which AI brings to the party. And AI tools in other areas will do the same to those areas as well. I mean, I think the, e the, the first to go, the easiest to go, the lowest hanging fruit is commercial illustration, because that's really only about getting to an end result. You want an album cover for a band. You know, every year I do a, a, an album cover for a band called Frontline Assembly in Canada. I really love them. I really love doing their album covers. But they basically give me the same brief every year. Post-industrial, dark, you know. It's it's sort of ele ele electronic uh, metal music. And I get the same brief every time. Now, they could they could type those words into Mid-Journey themselves and get an infinite amount of album covers for the foreseeable future. So there's no reason for them to right. ask me to do it or pay me well, to do it. Well, there, there's one reason I can think of, and that is that, that now they can say, and by the way, our album cover is designed by Sir Dave McKean. So <laughs> there's, a, there's a difference there. that They can't do that with Mid Journey, right? No, uh, but I think the financial imperative will mean that they, ju they just won't bother. I mean, uh, other digital factors have meant that it's now increasingly difficult to make a living as a writer or a, as a musician. They're being squeezed from every side to, to deliver more and more for less and less money for a, a, an audience that have come from a, a position of just download it for nothing and now begrudgingly pay uh, streaming services. I mean, what do musicians get now? 0.001% of a cent every time their tune is done. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not okay. possible to make a living doing this. And if it's not possible to make a living doing this, it's not possible to be professional doing this. To be great, you need to live it. You need to be doing it all the time. You can't just do it in your lunch breaks. We're only becoming more and more individuated 
and AI is going to massively accelerate that. So we are going to be a series of little isolated islands with mm -hmm. our own little curated worlds of experience, throwing, I mean, this was the, my image in, uh, in my book, Prompt, a series of individuals on isolated islands throwing messages in a bottle in, in a sea of AI noise in the vague hope that somebody else might see it. I mean, it's a very strange way of living your life. I'm trying to see the worst side. This conversation, right. my book, and the conversations I've been having about AI, I'm much more concerned about trying to see the downside because the downside is harder to see when the bauble of the new technology is so wonderful and so diverting. It's hard for people to imagine how this could go wrong. I'm, I'm only concerned with that. And if things don't go badly, great, fantastic. I'll, yeah. be, a, I'll be a happy man. Is it true you really created this book in 12 days? Yes, and, and honestly, I could have done it quicker than that because it just spits out things. Every two minutes, it spits out another image for me to use. I, I probably could have put in a good couple of long days and got it done. Uh, the only one that really took me time was the final one where I was considering the questions and implications and wanted to have some kind of coherent conversation with myself walking around uh, Rye Harbour and with AI and and try and come up with some sort of conclusions. And it was hard to come up with the conclusions because we're, you know, trying to imagine in the future how this is going to be. And for, for people who think, who are saying that it's just a tool, of course they're right. It is a very powerful tool. And part of the use of it is as a tool. And I have much less issue with that. I mean, I think we can see online most of the use of it. It's people uh, having fun with it. And I, I don't certainly don't begrudge that at all. But typing in a bunch of words and just getting these incredibly sophisticated images for themselves. And, yeah, yeah. and you look on the galleries in, in Mid Journey. And as far as I can see, it's like every fantasy art annual you've ever seen, just an infinite amount of that. So if everybody can do anything, then that whole world of illustration, uh, of, of uh, commercial work is completely redundant. Why, why would anybody need an illustrator to do it when everybody can do it? But the, but the thing that's missing is the, the, the hope in this, the, the thing that I sort of grab onto is uh, some hope that I might actually be able to uh, carry on uh, with my life in, in, in some way is all the stuff that you don't see in these images. I don't see intent. When I look at a painting by somebody I love, the great songwriting, the great composing, the great filmmaking, the great writing novels, the great painting and drawing, there is a life bound into that. If it comes across to you and affects you deeply and profoundly, what you're connecting with is not just a surface technique, you're connecting with the life of the person that made it. I've used the metaphor of going for a walk a, a, a lot in my book and, and in these conversations. The AI equivalent of going for a walk is to arrive, uh, is to you know go to where you start, where you set, where you're going to set off, and then just teleport to the place where you end. That's not going for a walk, is it? That is that's got absolutely nothing to do with going for a walk. Just arriving at the end point. But I think almost everybody, surely everybody, has dedicated time. An effort to something in their life, whether it's building building a motorbike or tending a garden, growing a, growing a vegetable patch, or you know buying a wreck of a house and doing it up, or you know they they, they put time and effort into something, and you appreciate the what, how that feels, not just to reach to the end result, but to exactly, yeah. but the physical effort of doing it, feeling feeling fitter, feeling stronger. Uh, of achieving it and see and learning how, how learning how to do these things along the way, and how each piece of knowledge is connected to another another piece, so it becomes a network of knowledge. You actually learn something. It's not lots of little individual bits of stuff decontextualized that is, that you know five minutes later you've forgotten because there's no context for it, and you've tested yourself along the way. You've done things you didn't think you could do. You have 
aimed towards doing something and got halfway and realized actually it, you have to do something else, it has to be something else. All of these intricate pathways, these tests, are about growing up and being human, the human experience. That's all the stuff that's important. Getting to the end result of the vegetable patch and the building of the motorbike and the doing up the room is lovely, but it's the journey along the way that's important. The creativity is the journey and the learning and the testing and the growing. It's not just about the end result. I think it's lovely that people are enjoying uh, playing around with this new tool, putting words in and getting these whack crazy images out. I think that's really fun. But any idea that, that you ask, and you know, I've never been creative in my life, but now I'm tapping this hidden creativity and making these things, you're not making anything. Creativity is interesting because a lot of mental health is about the loss of control. You feel, you feel like you can't make a difference. The world is is getting on top of you, and and uh, you have no volition in your life. You have no agency. But as if you choose to do a creative thing, and you don't have to be the world's greatest novelist or the world's greatest painter, just make something, do something, splash paint on canvas. The physicality of it, the focus of it, the fact that you're doing it means that you're in control of it. Uh, it. It can be a great turning point in regaining your own sanity, mental health, in people who are struggling. We're really, you know, a danger of, uh, of losing a lot of these things if we devalue the nature of art and creativity. Hopefully people can, uh, are going to find this somewhere on the, on the interwebs and, uh, and watch this conversation. Uh, thank right. you so much for your, for your time. Not sure if, if, if the future is looking any less bleak or dismal for artists at this point, but, um, but it was nice to talk to a fellow artist who at least have some, uh, some thoughts that, that I've, range I've... a little wider than, than just it's fun to create. <laughs> Thanks. I think the important thing is, um, you know, you have to fight for these things. So you have to imagine a future with you in it and where you can, uh, where you can do unique work. And the unique work is in the why questions. Why are you doing this? Not just the technical questions of, you know, achieving another image for another book cover, another album cover that's kind of meaningless, or just another bunch of mid-journey images in a gallery online. When it comes to talking to art students, occasionally I go to art colleges, and I think all I will be able to talk to students about in the future is why you personally are doing this. What are you committed to here? Not just doing a, 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 a brief for a commercial art project. All of that will dis disappear, I think. Those jobs will yeah. not exist anymore. So you now it's about focusing on yourself and your place in society, your place in the world, and what you've got to bring to those conversations. Those are powerful words to end on. So let's uh, end it there. Thank you so much uh, for talking to me, Dave. Thank you. Prompt Conversations with Artificial Intelligence is currently out of stock. Uh, it will come back in print though. And when it does, you can likely find the links for it at davemckeen.com slash shop. Um, <laughs> that's mid-journey calling me now. Say, stop talking about <laughs>